Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good day. Good day. I say good day. This is the coding train on a Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday today. Um, as you mi you might remember if you watched last Friday that I was not uh, that I said I would not be available this Friday, which is still true. And so instead, <laughs> the train arrived. <laughs> couple days early this week. Um, I had, I, I noticed in my schedule, four o'clock, six o'clock, window of time. Here I am live streaming on the coding train. So what am I planning to do today? You are, you might be asking yourself, well, so happens that I have a bit of a plan. Uh, I would like to, oh look, I got some suggestions that came in. I would like to do a part four for the Flappy Bird Neuroevolution Coding Challenge, which now has been released in three parts. And <laughs> this sounds very cruel to this poor bird, but I'm gonna, I wanna make this bird a better bird. We all should strive to be a better bird with better flapping in our lives. And um, that's my plan. So um, just looking, everybody seems to be saying hello, and this is what's going on, blah, 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 blah. All right. So now, what else do I have to say? Hmm. I'm just gonna check, just give me a second to check for something because I would like to make an announcement, but I have to check. Just have to check. Check here. Okay, okay, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Nope, can't make my announcement just yet, but maybe sometime during this live stream, I will. Talk about mine. It's not really, now nah, I made this too much of a thing. I might have another live stream this week at a surprising time with some surprising guests. And if it doesn't happen this week, it'll happen a different week. <laughs> it'll happen sometime. All right. Now, Daniel says, Le petrolophile du, du uh, 62. Is that right? <laughs> now I can't even read it. Oh. Should I uh, launch the casual debate about whether Java or C++ is faster? Um, okay, so let's just get started here. Oh, no, 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 One more thing I want to talk about. I'm also waiting. There's a class going on back here, and I can hear them talking and some sound. I think it ends at 5 o'clock, so in about a half an hour, I might feel a bit more inclined to be a little bit more ridiculous. But for right now, I'm taking this very seriously. This is a serious coding channel with serious educational content to learn stuff. Okay, ah. um, let's see. Uh, ah, I want to talk about something. So as you know, maybe you probably don't, why would you know? Um, I'm currently teaching a course at a New York University called The Nature of Code, spring 2018. I have been making a lot of videos on this YouTube channel this spring that go along with that course. The students watch the videos. I don't know if they watch the videos, if they can watch the videos. You apparently watch the videos. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so um, week 10 of this course, the topic was neuroevolution. And that is why I spent last week's focus was on neuroevolution and the Floppy Bird game. So if I go to the notes here for neuroevolution, Hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm getting some private messages. I'm just gonna reply that I'm live streaming online. This is gonna be entertaining, just for my own sanity. Uh, hold on, just give me a second here. I'm going to reply with this link, and I'm going to go here. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you soon. I am live on YouTube right now. <laughs> okay, that entertained me to be able to send that message. Uh, now I'm just going to check. Can I make my announcement? Can I make my announcement? Uh, I don't see any emails right now. All right. Um, back to the Slack channel. There we go. All right. <laughs> I was saying something. So I have this neuroevolution uh, code example and demo. That's what I'm going to work on today to improve. And after that's done, if I have some more time, I'm going to talk through this other example that I have been building. So I actually started making this example last year, and it didn't work very well. <laughs> and then I tried it again, and then again, and then again some more, and then again some more, and then I gave up. 
Then I tried it some more, and then I gave up. There's, there's this, it's, this, it's the circle of coding life. I try some more, I give up. I come back to it, I try some more, I give up. And every once in a while, in the circle of coding life, somebody comes along to help you out. And me, I am so me, a uh, frequent coding train contributor and viewer, uh, had some excellent suggestions <laughs> that fixed a couple things that I had really kind of done in an odd way. And now this example is do, I, I don't know if I should say that it's working, but it's doing something. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening here. The goal for this example is to evolve steering agents to collect food. And so what you're seeing right now, if I actually, let me, um, let me no loop this for a second. Um, so if I look at any one of these, oh, interesting. So I kind of, mm, all right, well, well, well. <laughs> So I gotta work, I gotta think about this, because, uh, there, but there's, so you can see here, each one of these vehicles, oh, I'm standing in front of this one, each one of these vehicles has eight sensors attached to it. Those sensors light up when they come across a piece of food. Those sensors are then inputs into a neural network in the code, and the output of the neural network is a desired velocity. I want to go this way, I want to go this way. It's, and when it starts, they're all making random choices based on their sensor readings. Over time, they, they will slowly lose their health and they will die. If they collect food, their health will increase, they will live longer. Every moment that one of these vehicles or agents, or whatever you want to call them, lives, it has a chance of reproducing. And it makes a copy of itself with that same neural network with some mutation. So over time, they should evolve a neural network system that would push them in the direction of the food, you would think. And in fact, they also get deleted. They die if they leave the window. So in theory, they're also being fed as inputs information about where they are in the space. They would probably, in theory, also evolve a behavior where they would turn around when they're getting close to the edge. So this is um, what I've been working on. You can see what the annotation here is this is how many frames this particular agent has been alive. So you can see here, if I uh, set this running again, say loop, I don't, I'm gonna let this run. Now what I'm gonna do, so mostly what you're seeing here is random behavior. We could sit here and watch it evolve for a while, but I have this slider here which will let me speed it up. Um, and right now it's just doing 100 cycles per frame. So let's let it do this. It says 17 new messages. Okay. Um, <coughs> Let's see. How, do you think I've given enough time? Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. Any questions about this? People are still speaking French. All right, I think that's good. Let me slow this back down and let's evaluate them. Let's take a look. What do you think? Are <laughs> I like this one. It's just spinning there. Um, so you can see they're hopefully, uh, you, sometimes after watching this for a while, there's one that just lasts a really long time. In theory, the one that has the highest score rate is highlighted. So this one currently has the highest score. Unfortunately, it just died. Um, okay, I'm watching this. Nobody's discussing in the chat this wonderful example that I worked for an entire year on. <laughs> the soundboard volume is very low. <gasps> Interesting. All right, that can be fixed. So, um, I'm gonna just, I just wanted to show this. Um, this is, uh, hopefully, I, will, I would like to do this actually as a coding challenge, build the whole thing from nothing. Um, <coughs> but, um, but I would like to see if I can make some like, minor tweaks and improvements to this first, even still. Um, oh, I really like what this one is doing here. It feels very, oh, come on, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Um, oh, it sounds like it's coming through your mic and not the system. That's interesting. Hold on. Huh. Oh. Well. I 
I mean, am I really going to go crazy about the sound stuff right now? Oh, mute output there. That's oh, whoops. <laughs> I, think I, uh, I think now I might have fixed that. Did that fix it? All right. <clears throat> um, all right. So now, let's put this aside, and let's let's let me return to what I'm here to do. Uh, okay. So now, what I need to do is. Um, I need to find. Now it could be turned down. <laughs> yeah, I bet, because I turned it up quite a bit. Uh, so let me turn it back down to what it was. OK. There we go. Um, um, all right, actually, hmm. Yeah, this should be fine. Um, All right, let's look here. Um, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, so this is where we last left off. Let me see if I have this camera up and running. Okay, that camera is up and running. I am over here doing some jumping jacks. <laughs> Neck pain. Ah, it's only 440. We're doing all right. Um, now, let me come back here and see what's going on. How are we doing there, Flappy Bird? OK. Whoa. All right, everybody. So I'm going to just let, let me look at this list. Let's think about this. Does anyone have any other suggestions in the chat? Well, let's read through these. So first. I want to uh, add a feature where the bird is removed if it hits the bottom or the top. That apparently is part of the game. <laughs> um, the pipes, the closest pipe detection, I think I need to fix because when the front of the pipe passes, it's no longer uh, a relevant pipe, and I still need to um, I still need to detect it all the way until the back passes. Um, y velocity is the input. I don't know why I just thought, like, why bother adding that? <laughs> that was a really key. And then if I, this might end up needing to be a part five, <laughs> which is saving and loading a bird that's been trained to play really well and, like, loading it back in, like, a separate environment to just play the game. Okay, so, um, so here we go. People are saying better hit detection, limit the jumping rate so the birds don't fly straight up. In the original game, yes, I've got those. Okay, so I think this is what I'm going to do. So let me get the code going. In case you're wondering, by the way, um, this other, um, if you're looking for, there's also this version of the same exact thing, which has a lot of these features built into it already. This is just the version that I made last year. Um, and you can see, look, the E key does not work. Um, you can see here that there's some more information uh, about the high score. And it also, I got to move this over. There we go. Uh, I can run the best one so far. And this, by the way, has the Y velocity of in, this has the Y velocity as input. And it also has uh, the feature that if it hits the bottom or the top, <laughs> this one seems to just, this one that did the best so far seems to only want to stay in the middle. It's going to die right now, right? Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's let this go a little bit longer. Oh, wait. i got to continue training. Let's get one to do better. They look like they're doing better now. All right. So let's let this go for a little while. This one seems like a really good one. 
I kind of want there to be just one left. Okay, there's one left. Run best. Go back. Now we can just speed it up just a little bit. So we can see now this one has been trained really, really well. And it doesn't seem to have any problem beating this very simple game. So I want to achieve results like this as I make these improvements to the tutorial. Okay? Um, does it get data about how near the next pipe is or just its gap Y location, ask Medin. Uh, I believe, I mean, yes, it gets information about the, the, the X location of the closest pipe. Um, but unfortunately, it does starts ignoring that pipe as soon as the front of it, as soon as the front of it passes the bird. And it probably should consider it, like, and then starts looking at the next one, it could easily jump up by accident. So, um, so yeah, okay. It, it seems to have no problem anyway, but that might be worth fixing. Okay, um, that's an easy fix. All right, so now I'm going to close that. I'm going to close this. I'm going to, oh, actually, I didn't want to close that. I was going to have that at the beginning. Er, the whole point of me opening that also was to have this version, the improved version. So just give me a second. Let me train it again. Uh, to, to have the improved version as the sort of starting background to uh, this part four. Okay. You guys probably can't hear the music coming from the classroom next door, but I can. <laughs> All right, how are we doing here? We got a good one? Okay, ready everybody? You could vary the gap width, but it'll make the birds have to train more. Yeah. Okay. Let me, re let me recycle the camera. <laughs> I'm going to recycle the camera. <laughs> it's a very expensive camera. Why not just recycle it? No, I meant cycle the camera, not recycle. <laughs> Welcome to part four of the Flappy Bird Neuroevolution Coding Challenge. So I didn't actually do part four when I did the original challenge, which is parts one through three. Links in this video's description. <gasps> Breathe. <laughs> um, but uh, I got many excellent suggestions about things that I could do to improve it. And so I actually did implement a bunch of those, and what you're seeing here right now is a version of the Neuroevolution Challenge with those things improved, and this is a particular, oh, it's really, ugh, it keeps dying. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start over. I want a better one that doesn't die. We'll let it train it some more. The funny thing that I just realized is it go, it kind of, if, it, if, it, if one beats the game perfectly, it's not gonna train anymore because, so let me, let's try this one. Did that one get a new high score? I don't remember now. Hold on, let me let it beat the high score. <laughs> uh, I just have to get above 5,000 to see that I have one that's doing better. Then I'm going to start this video over. <laughs> All right, we're above. Do we have two of them? I think there's two of them there. Come on, which one's going to win? Uh, maybe there's one now. No, I think there's still two. I don't think that's like a effect. Who knows? Let's get to 10,000. This is good enough. This has got to be good. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too much noise. Hello, welcome to part four Woo! of the Flappy Bird Coding Challenge. So when I originally did the coding challenge, parts one through three, linked in this video's description, I did not do a part four. In fact, I, I finished. I was like, I'm done. But I got so many great comments uh, from the, uh, in the, in the comments feed. I shouldn't do that. They probably hear me through the wall. I got so many great comments. Uh, <laughs> I got so many great comments uh, in the videos. The videos comments. Is that what it is? I'm gonna make. I'm really gonna make Mathieu work on his editing today. I can feel it already. <laughs> I got so many great comments with wonderful suggestions on how to improve 
the game, the training, the bot, the thing. Let me just start over. I'm just going to start over. Oh, K Weekman, isn't this too late for you? <laughs> Last time. I know this is torture for the people watching live, the comments feed. Yeah, my, I, I use my Google Reader to check the RSS feed of the comments, and I read them in 1997. I traveled back in time. <coughs> Hello, and welcome to part four of the Flappy Bird Neuroevolution Coding Challenge. Now, you might have thought, you might have watched part three and thought, ah, oh, look, it's done. Finished, coding challenge complete. But I got so many excellent comments and suggestions about how to improve uh, my neuroevolution simulation that I decided to come back and attempt a part four. <laughs> this is part four. So, oh, oh by the way, and, and before I actually came back to attempt, I did some work to test out some of these ideas. And here you can see this is a version of it running with some of these improvements. And you can see that I pretty much have a little bird here that has beaten the game as it stands. Um, all right, so let me close this out. I'm going to go to this GitHub uh, issue um, and look at these for Look at these for, um, time out for a second. Did I, I forgot to look at these. Add a generation count, uh, deserialize this in the part four video. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I'm gonna, these are good suggestions, but I'm, uh, I'm gonna just go with my list right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go over to this GitHub page where I kept track of some of the comments and put them here in a list. So these are the things that I want to add. And to be honest, I might do this last one in a part five, but let's see, at the very least, what I want to do is, apparently a very important feature of the game is that if the bird reaches the ceiling or the floor, kaput to the bird. So I want to make sure to implement that. Um, there's an issue, a bug in which uh, the pipes, the, by detection for the closest pipe, uh, I'm only detecting it up to the point where it reaches the bird itself and not as it passes it, and that, that's sort of causing some issues, as well as, oh my goodness, Y velocity. I mean, let's think about this for a second. I have this diagram over here, right? If this is my bird and this is the gap approaching, right, what if the bird is already moving up or what if the bird is falling, da falling down? This would make a very big difference in whether I should jump or not. Because if I'm moving up, jumping might cause me to hit the top, the, the top part of the pipe. So I shouldn't jump. But if I don't jump while I'm moving down, I'll probably hit the bottom. So having Y velocity, whether I'm already moving up or down, as part of the inputs into the system is going to create a much smarter bird. And it makes sense that a bird playing the game would know if it's moving up or down. So I feel like that's a fair input. So let's go and add those things. Um, all right, so what do, I, what do I need to do? So first, let's go with um, adding the Y velocity. Let's go in reverse order. Let's go with adding the Y velocity as an input. That's probably the most interesting thing in terms of the actual algorithm that's going on here. So I'm gonna go back to my code. Woo, zoom back in. I'm going to go to the bird. The bird, as you recall, has a brain. So the brain previously had four inputs. Top and bottom of the pipe. X position of the pipe. Y position of the bird. Now, I want five inputs, and I don't know, let's increase the number of hidden neurons to make it a bit more sophisticated. I like a sophisticated bird. Now, then we're gonna go down, and we're going to look here, aha, these are the inputs. The Y location, the top, the bottom, the X location, all normalized to a range between zero and one. So now, all I need to say is th this dot velocity, Let's make that an input. Now, this is a bit interesting here. Now, let me just make sure that's the variable, right? This dot velocity. Now, here's the thing. When I wanted to, when I use something like the X position as an input or the Y position, there's a distinct, <laughs> right? There's a distinct way to normalize that value to a range between zero and one. The Y values go between zero and 480, divide by 480, I have a number between zero and one, but the velocity is a bit more mysterious. First of all, it could be negative, it could be positive. What should I really do here? Let's try something arbitrary. <laughs> Let me try dividing by 19, no, 10. So, you know, in the end, I just need an input. Maybe it's okay if it's also negative. I want it within kind of like a smallish range, but I think if I divide it by something, um, that's probably gonna do just fine. Oh, and this should be inputs four. 
So in that sense, I now, if I go back and run it, I should have already a smarter bird. So let's let this run for a little while. Let's train it for a little while. And we can see, oh yeah, this is the number of generations. I've gotten up to seven, because it's already kind of pretty smart. Let's slow it down, and we can see, uh, we can see there it is, uh, figuring, it sort of figured it out already. Well, this, the, some things are a bit different from this and the other version. But you can see that adding that y velocity has already probably improved it. OK, time out. Um, I'm looking at some chat messages here. I should take the log of the velocity to normalize. That's interesting. Is that really true? What did I do in my other one that I prepared? So if I go to the code to the other one that I did, then I go to the bird class, and I find Oh, oh, look at that. I actually did this. I didn't realize that. I, I arbitrarily gave it a range between negative 5 and 5 and mapped that between 0 and 1. Is that better? Um, the bird doesn't die when it touches the ceiling in the original game? Oh, I didn't have a max velocity. Bird no die on the ceiling. You can't take a log of a negative. That's a good point. Well. Simon says make them red if they're bad and green if they're good. But how do I know if they're bad or good? <laughs> um, all right. I'm just going to leave it as I have it. We'll see how it does. It's working. Um, one thing that I don't love that I did here also... Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to just secretly fix this. Um, because outside of the video itself. Um, oh yeah, I just don't want the range of the slider to go so high. All right. Um, okay, so really not the ceiling? All right, we'll let the ceiling, we'll let them live if they, if they go to the ceiling. <laughs> you can't jump if you're already going up in the original game? Really? If your y velocity is up, it won't let you tap to like jump, jump. That's interesting. Well, these are all important details. But I can't possibly implement them all. Let me just get them one at a time. All right. OK, so the next feature I would like to implement, now that we've added y velocity, is let's try uh, fixing the pipe's closest detection. So let me explain what's wrong. <laughs> so what I'm doing is if I have the bird here and I have this pipe, I am looking, well, hold on. This isn't really a great place to draw because I'm not standing. I guess I could do it over here. That might be better, okay. So if this is the bird and this is the pipe and this is another pipe, I have an algorithm that says, oh, hey, this is the one I should look at. But if there happens to be another pipe over here that's technically closer, I want to ignore it because I only care about the pipes that are in front of me. Um, but still, it's there on the, in the canvas because it's part of the animation. So I have an algorithm that already deals with that. But unfortunately, right, as soon as the, if the pipe is here, it's still going to read as the closest. But if it's actually like here, right above it, as soon as the front of the pipe passes, the bird, it's going to ignore that pipe. And so if it sees another one coming, it's got to go up. It could kind of get, it should really still consider that pipe. It should consider that pipe all the way until the back of it passes. I think this is going to be an easy thing to fix. Um, hold on a sec here. I think this is going to be an easy thing to fix. So let's go and uh, find this part of the code. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Um, in bird, bird, somewhere in here, in think. This is me finding the closest pipe. And as long as the distance between the pipe's x location and 
my location is positive, that's something that I want to look at. But let me actually just find the distance to the back of the pipe. Oh, this is so easy. Pipes.x plus pipe dot w. So that, that w is the width of the pipe. So I should be able plus pipes index i dot uh, w minus this dot x. So this should now work. This is actually the location that I'm looking for, which is behind the pipe. Wonderful. All right. Do I even want to run it again? Do I care? Let's run it again. Let's speed it up to train it for a little while. And there we go. And let's just, let's still run. We can see, there we go. Oh, poor, poor little flappy bird lost the game. All right, so now, what else do we have to do? If I go back to my list, we now, ah, fix when the bird hits the bottom. Now, I'm told by the chat that actually, in the original game, hitting the ceiling is allowed. So let's only add the bottom, I guess. <laughs> Um, so if I go into the bird, there is a function called, uh, I believe, well, there isn't actually. <laughs> so hold on a second. Let's go to the sketch. I've forgotten how my code works completely. And let's go and see here. Ah, if pipes index i hits bird. So if a pipe intersects the bird, then I want to remove that bird. We've done that. Now, I also, if the bird or, <laughs> edit point here. I don't, I must have done this all. I think I want to refactor this to, I don't think care. No, that's fine. We'll just do, we'll do it, uh, we'll do another. The problem is here, all right, so this is the loop where I remove birds. <laughs> but the problem is this loop is inside the pipes. So do I really want to remove a bird here? I mean, I don't know what the best way of doing this is, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another little quick check down here. I'm going to use I. And I'm going to say, if birds index i, uh, what should I say, off screen? Off screen. Then here is another reason why I might want to remove that particular bird and put it into my saved birds array, which was admittedly a bit of a silly solution, but it works. So I need to write a function here in bird, which is called off screen. And I'm just going to return, return this dot y is greater than height, or this dot y. I can't resist having it die if it hits the ceiling. I cannot resist. Let's just add that for a second off screen. So let's see if this works. Um, and let's do this. So look, they're at the bottom. Ah, you know what? There's an issue here. I think somewhere in here, ah, right. I had this extra code to constrain them within the screen, which is sort of silly. And now I can remove that. They don't get constrained. They just die. So you can see they're hitting the bottom. They're dying. So now let's speed this up and let's let this go. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> oh, I could use a sigmoid to squash the velocity. That's a clever idea. All right. Okay. Okay, I have returned. Looks like we've got a pretty good one here that doesn't seem to have any problem beating this game. Lovely, look at you go. Look at you, scrappy little bird, flapping your way through this course. Beautiful. So I think we've made some pretty good improvements here. 
Um, I don't know. Let's make the game a little bit harder. <laughs> Just to see. So what did we have now in pipe? Oh, the spacing is 175. That is way too easy. So let's make it 125. And let's give a little refresh here. And I will be back again in a minute. <laughs> So sigmoid was a really good suggestion. Five o'clock. Oh, let me check my email. See if I can make my announcement. Thank you, Isaiah. Woohoo! This flappy bird is dedicated to you. Okay. All right, I've returned. This bird looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's see how it's doing here. Yep, doesn't seem to have any problem with this 125 spacing. What do you think? Can we push it a little? Just push it a little, just a little. 100, 75, 80, 50. Ah, I don't know, let's try. Let's flip a coin. Whoa, look at that, look at it go. Oh, it's such a good little bird there. All right. Oh, this is a bad idea. 75 is gonna be way too hard. See you in a little bit. to be doing it. All right, dare I say that it's working? It's hard to tell with it so sped up. Let's actually slow it down. There's actually two of them going. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a bunch of them in there. Let's just, let's, let's look at it at a more, huh. Well, seems pretty reasonable to me. All right, so this is pretty exciting to see. You know, I probably, I, again, I don't have the exact physics of the original game, so there probably could be some tweaks there. But as you can see, just really that Y velocity, if I take out that Y velocity input, well, let me just show, I think the Y velocity is probably the most important fix that we made. So I can really quickly, just in the bird itself, I can just, let me just set the Y velocity to zero. So basically it's not getting it anymore. It's as if it's a constant input, so it's sort of become irrelevant. I don't think it's going to be able to solve this now. So let me give it a little bit of a, a run here for a few minutes. Right. People, uh, Remy in the chat says jumping height way too low to gap size. <laughs> so that's a good point. All right, so I've let this run for a while, but you can see like it's just like, it's all over the place. It's not able to sort of fit itself through these pipes. Um, there, there is a good point in the chat that I probably, with that, that I haven't really, that I've made the sort of amount that it jumps very, very low. So it's able to kind of like perfectly position. It's almost as if it's just like finding the exact spot. Um, so, you know, one thing I might just try, let's put it back, let's put the velocity back. Let's make it a little bit harder for the bird. Let's give it a bit more of a powerful jump. Let's give it 16 instead of 12. This will make it a harder game for it to play, I think. But let's see if we can do it. I don't know about you, if you're gonna do all of these as like weird little sped up things, it could be fun. I feel like you should have one output, then check if it's over 0.5 or not. Yeah, that would, that's a very reasonable suggestion. So the reason why the generations now are so much, are so variable is that, um, 
Like, why did it have like 50 generations and it only had three? So it starts a new generation once all the birds have died. So I, I could program it in a different way, but that's currently how it works. Um, so you can see, I don't know, is my hit detection looks like it might be a little bit generous. <laughs> I think the collision detection is a little bit generous. You could see, I don't know, the, the, uh, maybe, maybe the lift. Okay, so I'm being told there's a very important feature, which is that if it's moving up, it cannot jump. It can only jump if it's moving down. So let's see if we can add that. Oh boy, I did not know that was the case. So that, the way that I would add that is this is where it chooses to jump up. And so I suppose, I mean, I guess it just, I might as well render the decision irrelevant, right? So, and if output zero is greater than output one and this dot velocity is moving down, which means greater than or equal to zero, okay? So I'm allowed, I'm not allowed to go up unless I'm already going up. Let's try it. And let's, let me, just for the sake of argument, let me put this back to the, the pipe distance. Let me put that back to 100. <laughs> this was going to be such a short video. Now it's so long. And let me speed this up. And I shall return. Yeah, we really need better graphics. I agree. Oh, I forgot about the Slack channel. Hi, Muab YT. Right, I am 15. I've been following your channel for many years. So how old were you when you started following the channel? Uh, yeah, you can jump when going up. Oh, you can. Pretty sure all the times I played it, I'm sure I jumped while going up. Yeah, I feel like you can jump while going up. Anyway. All right, there's some interesting discussion now in the chat as to whether that's actually a feature of the game, but I did implement it, and I'm only letting it jump while it's moving down, and it still seems to be able to kind of get through these, which is pretty cool to see. I do kind of like the quality of it right now, of what, it's, what it looks like, so that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so who knows? I'm gonna take that feature out because apparently that it, there's, it's unclear as to whether that's actually a feature of the game. Um, I don't feel like that needs to necessarily be a feature of the simulation, but I will leave it in as a comment um, in case anyone wants to reference it. Um, all right, so now, I feel like this is in good shape, but what I want to be able to do, right, what I want to be able to do is, let's say, I mean, this isn't a very complex problem. I'm able to kind of like train a bird to play the game very well, very quickly. But if I had something that took a really long time to train, I would want to be able to save the model. And by the model, I mean a copy of all of the parameters and values and weights and variables and things that are in that bird's neural network brain. I want to save a copy of that so that I could load that later. And luckily for us, there's a nice way of doing that. So that will come in part, now it is, won't be part five. Oh, this is a part five coding challenge. See you there. Yeah, so um, Marcos Rios in the chat writes, wouldn't bird training get faster if you limit the bird lifespan? So probably it makes, it would, that would make sense for me to add something like that. Like right now, once it sort of figured it out, it could just go infinitely. Um, so let's see here. Um, let me think about how I want to do this. Oh, flappybird.io. Well, here we go. Oops, restart. Oh, so it's actually like until I jump. Yeah. Boy, this is a much. So one thing is the gravity is much. Oh. Ah. 
Oh, so it's not as generous with the collision detection. <laughs> Can I use the space bar? Oh, space bar is much easier. Okay, here we go, everybody. Oh, <laughs> terrible at this. Okay, come on, come on. Here we go. I'm now, I'm officially a YouTube gaming channel. This is me at a YouTube gaming channel playing Flappy Bird. Will I get millions of subscribers now? <laughs> I hear the gaming channels are very popular. Come on, come on. Can I get past, oh, I can't get past the first one. <laughs> okay, I can do it, I can do it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna happen for me. I can tell it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Yes, yes. Oh, I got past the first one. Yay! <laughs> okay, I did it. Um, all right, so, but let's just, just to check a few things. Definitely dies when it gets to the bottom. Hold on. Does it die when it goes to the top? No, I can just go forever and ever and ever. But I will die because the pipe is infinitely high. I wonder if in my game there's a bug where I could actually jump over the pipe. <laughs> Probably not the way I programmed it. Um, all right, so I think I'm close enough. I would love for people to make their own variations of this, um, but I think, yeah, now, nah, yeah, <laughs> all right. Look, I'm much better at training a neural network to play the game. Yeah, so, you know, who knows? Okay. So let's move on and let's do that last part. So one thing that I want to just check is the, Am I using the latest version of the neural network library which has a serialize, deserialize? So serialize will, uh, this should work. Yep, there's a copy, serialize. So, um, so yeah, I should be able to do this. All right, so I'm not gonna implement obviously the serialization, I could show it. Um, but scratch. Oh, I'm. I might be using Scratch sooner than you think. You guys are already. You guys are hacked into my email to see what I keep checking to find out about. Uh, all right. Um. This is, this is great. What, what, what everybody should do, if you start a YouTube channel, I highly recommend that in the middle of your live stream, you should start checking your email. That's like the only thing I can do that's worse than that is like checking, see if I have any text on my phone. All right, let's do this last part. Um. <laughs> what time is it? 5.15, all right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. There's time here. Hello, can you believe it? Oh, 5.15, this means, hold on, let me just go, I just gotta go peek in the classroom next door to see if there's nobody in there. I'll be right back, you'll be able to hear me as I go. Oh, this. Okay, now I'm over here, hello. This is a door, there's a door, this is a room, it's actually a closet. It's a fairly large closet. The door is now open, I'm exiting, I'm exiting, can you still hear me? I'm in the hallway, I'm looking in the classroom, I'm actually standing in the classroom next door. I'm gonna bang on the wall. Do you think you can hear if I bang on the wall? Hmm. Unfortunately, my mic is still on me, so this is kind of like a very poor test, but there is nobody in there. Now I can be loud. <laughs> okay, here we go, everybody. Ready? <laughs> Welcome to part five of this multi-part Flappy Bird coding challenge. 
I anticipate only at least 600 more parts to go. <laughs> I think this might actually be the last one. So look what I've got. I've got this bird. It jumps. It doesn't jump. It fits through pipes. It does what I, it, I've always dreamed it would do. But I want, here's the thing. Now, I have this. And what if I just, by accident, I'm over here and I'm like, whoo, whoops, and I hit refresh. That bird, that bird that I've loved <laughs> is gone forever. I will never get it back, never. I might be able to get another bird that's similar, that does as well, but I will never get that original bird back. However, I'm gonna, that's why I'm gonna add another feature to this thing. So uh, the feature that I'm going to add is save and load a particular bird. Okay, so I, uh, I what, what I want to do, let me let it, let me let it train again. So I'm going to let, let's sit that, let this go. Actually, the thing is when I, when I tab away from the browser, <laughs> the browser is smart and stops the animation from going, so it's actually not continuing to train, but that's fine. And what I want to do, actually, there is a function inside of the neural network library called serialize and deserialize. Now, I actually didn't implement these functions in a tutorial. You could, act, if you want to see how the neural network library was built, I have a 10 part or something video series building the whole library. But through a pull request, I'm going to go see who made that pull request so I can uh, credit them. Let's find who uh, pull requested the serialize and deserialize. Um, So uh, there's closed serialize. This is it here, right? Merged. I have returned to show you the pull request from Engine Feeder. This was uh, pull request number 50 that added these serialization and deserialization functions. So what it actually does, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. When I'm like, I always have the Slack channel, the Patreon group Slack channel in the corner of my eye. Sometimes when there's like some like YouTube video that gets posted, it's like, what is that? But I will, I will gracefully ignore it, even though I didn't just do that then. All right, I'm coming back to making, I really, See, the whole thing that I used to do was just go off on all these tangents and make these totally insane videos and not actually edit them. Now I'm drunk with power, drunk with editing power, because I'm not even doing the editing. Thank goodness for Math Blank, who does the editing, but now I, I think I gotta really slow down here and be a little less crazy. I'm gonna back up a little bit, just to make this less complicated for you. And I'm, then I'm not going to do any more editing. Whoops. I have returned to show you the actual pull request where the serialize and deserialize methods came in. Thank you to Engine Feeder 101 who made this pull request on February 10th, which was a little while ago. Um, so if I go back to those functions, you'll see that. Look at this. JSON.stringify this. Well, I want to use the whiteboard. All right. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the. Let me actually just erase some of the whiteboard and then uh, come back. sad to lose these diagrams, but I think it's fine. Um, let me just... Okay.
Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's say I have a simple class. Like, let's say I have a particle class. Class, boy, lots of squeaking going on here. Class particle. And in the constructor function, I set like this dot x equal to something, maybe it's a random number, and this dot y equal to something, maybe a random number. So then, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to write some code like this. Let p equals equal a new particle. And what if I now say json dot stringify p? What do I get? Well, what I get is a string, raw text, that is the JSON formatted data that is part of this particular instance of a particle object. Now, if there's methods and functions in here, those won't be included. But if all I want are the sort of variables, the properties of the particle, what's its current velocity, what's its current x, y location, then I'm going to get that stuff. This is going to give me a string that just looks like this, x, you know, whatever it is, uh, 100, comma, y, you know, 20, and curly bracket. So even though the neural network is much more complex, this is doing exactly the same thing. It's basically saying, hey, all that stuff that's part of the neural network, all of the values of all of these weights and things, just serialize all that. Put it all in a big JSON file. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So, um, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my code. I'm going to go to the bird code. And what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go to the sketch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, is there a mouse press? I'm going to just, I'm going to add key pressed. What I'm going to do when I add key pressed is I'm going to say, uh, let b equal population index zero. So I'm going to pick just one bird from the population. Uh, eventually, I want to like get the best one, the one that I want to save. Then I'm going to say, uh, and I'm going to call this a bird. Then I'm going to say, let json equal bird dot serialize. And all this is doing, right? I could have just right here, I could just say, let json equal json dot stringify bird. So the serialize function just does this for us. It calls json dot stringify. So I'm going to do that. Then oh, I'm going to do something totally insane. Actually, I'm not. I'm just going to say console.log json. Let's just look at it in the console. And I'm going to say if key equals s. So I'm only going to do this uh, if I've pressed the s key. And I feel like there's something weird in JavaScript or P5 where I actually say the capital S, but whatever. Let's figure that out. So here we go. Let's go here. So all these birds are going. I'm now going to press s. And <laughs> population is not defined. Because it's not called population. It's called birds. That would be nice to call it what it's called. And now I'm going to uh, press S, bird.serialize. Oh, right, of course. It's not the bird object that has the serialize function built into it. It's the brain. It's the bird brain, the bird brain. So this also should have been json.stringify bird.brain. OK, we're getting there. Brain is the neural network object inside of the bird. That's the only thing that I care about to save. If I wanted to save more stuff, I'd have to do that. But right now, we're good. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> we're going to get it. Hit save. And look at this. You can see, look at that. This is all the data. These are all the values that are in all those arrays. It's all the stuff. So guess what I can do next? I can say. Uh, save JSON, bird.json, JSON. So I, I think this function in P5, the save JSON function, will save the data. Oh, actually, interestingly enough, it's already made into a string. Oh, this is so interesting. I think I actually don't need to see. So I could just say, um, I could just say save, because this is technically a string. Oh. Okay, I, I've, I've waded into territory that I didn't want to wade into. But the save JSON function in P5 is designed to take an object that hasn't been turned into a string and turn it into a string so you can save it. Whereas what I want to do is I already made the thing into the string. I just want to save the string. So let's actually try a few different things. <laughs> just for fun, let's try saying save JSON bird. Uh, 
sorry, uh, bird.json and then bird. So I'm not gonna bother with serializing it. I think the p5 save json function will do that for me. So let's do this. Then I'm gonna hit S. And, ooh boy, uh, we got some crazy errors. Save json. So let's look up the reference. Save, I probably got the order wrong. Save json p5.js. Let's look at the reference and let's look. Ah, the data goes first and then the name of the file goes second. Okay, so bird, comma bird.json. There we go. Now let's try this again. JSON is not defined because I don't need to console log anymore. Let's do it again. Oh, it actually did it. You can see right down here, what, when you call save, ah, oh, doc. When you call save, oh, you can't, oh, hold on. Mathieu, let me try that over again. Okay, wait a second. Um, okay, oh, thank you. Um, keys have to be wrapped in quotes. Good point. Um, all right, hold on, we're gonna get there. Let me try that again. So let me hit save now, again, finally. And now, what you can see is actually, I'm gonna go here and do show in Finder. So I don't know if you could see that down here, but down here, right down here, it actually, oh, look at this. This is bothering me. Is that better? Try this one more time. Let me delete them. So hold on, we're gonna make this Try this one more time. <sighs> Oops. All right, we're gonna try this one more time. Actually, what I'm also gonna do is move this up. All right, I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna hit S, and you can see, oh, look what just happened. Right down here, the browser downloaded a file called bird.json automatically. So I don't have any real file management capabilities from the client, but I can auto trigger a download to go directly to the default downloads directory of the browser. So I can now click here and say show in finder. And now I should have, look at that, this bird.json file, whoops. Um, and what I should be able to do is then drag that and take a look at it in Atom. So there it is, look at this. This is actually, oh, I saved the whole bird. Look at this, I didn't mean to do this. I saved the birds X and Y, its gravity, its lift, its velocity. And look, now I saved its brain, input nodes. So I forgot, of course, all I wanna do is just save the brain. So what I can do now is I can change this to, um, I go back to bird and I can change, whoops, sorry, back to sketch. And I can change this to save JSON bird.brain. Okay, here we go, ready? And I'm gonna save that. And now I have another one. I'm gonna open that up in Atom. And we can see this is now just the bird itself. So you can see these are the weights. This, these, this is, sorry, not the bird. This is the neural network of the bird and these are all of its current weights. All these numbers seem and feel rather meaningless to us, but they're quite meaningful until how, how it works. So now, we can then write another sketch that loads that JSON file back in. So how, how do I want to do that? <laughs> Take a minute here, just give me a minute. So a couple options are, one is I could, um, I could make an entire other sketch that's just the flappy bird game that loads a bird, or Another is I could create a mode in this that loads a bird. Let's make a totally separate sketch. Yeah, I can use drop. Um, but So actually before I go and create a sketch that loads the JSON, let's actually make this load a bird that we want to load. So um, one thing that I could do is after, after I'm training for a while, I could kind of find the current bird in the population that has the highest 
score. So I could say, uh, actually, I could say no, there's only one bird right now. Whoops, no loop. So let, I'm going to do this kind of manually. This is pretty terrible. So now I just want to make sure there's just one bird. So there's just one bird. So this is definitely the one that I want to save. <laughs> so I'm going to hit S. And I got that bird. So now I have the bird that's doing really well. And it's in bird2.json. So I am going to uh, just call this bestbird.json, OK? So now, of course, what I would really want to do, and I, I leave this to you, the viewer, as an exercise, is make an interface, auto-detect one that's been doing well, trigger the download, make like an upload button that I can upload the best one. But I'm going to do this in sort of a hacky way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an exact copy of my sketch. And I'm just going to call it Flappy Bird. And I am going to go into Atom. And I'm going to get rid of the genetic algorithm code completely. I'm done. No genetic algorithm here. I am going to go to the sketch and I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I don't need all the birds. I don't need all saved birds. I don't need the counter. Um, all I need is one bird. And I don't need this save thing. And I'm going to just say function preload. I am going to say let data, bird data, or bird brain, bird brain. Then I'm going to say bird brain equals load JSON, best bird.json. Then in setup, all I need to say is bird brain, uh, sorry, bird equals neural network dot deserialize bird brain. Uh, and this is actually, so I should call this brain data or brain JSON. Let's call this, <laughs> trying to make this make sense. Uh, brain JSON. Then this is the actual bird brain. Deserialize the brain JSON. And then the bird is a new bird with that bird brain. So this is the process of loading the data, then deserializing it into an object, then creating a new bird with that object. Because my bird code, the constructor, accepts a neural network object as the brain. It will remake it. So let's go back. What else do I need to do in Sketch? Uh, adding new pipes. You know, there's only one bird now. So all I need to do is, uh, I'm actually not even going to worry about this. I'm just going to let the bird play. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm going to let the bird go off screen. I'll just like, you know, all right, hold on. So in theory, I should do something. If the bird hits the pipe, I'm going to just say console log collision just so we see it doing something. If the bird goes off screen, I'm going to say uh, bottom. And then here, um, oh, that's the pipes, sorry. Uh, and this is just one bird now. If one bird off screen, I'm just going to say console.log bottom. Oh, so much code to write. And now I can just say bird think. Bird updates. This is all the stuff for the genetic algorithm, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then I want to draw, show the bird, and show all the pipes. So this is now, I just made a version of the game. Basically, all I did was eliminate the genetic algorithm and eliminate the array of birds, because there's just one bird. And I also need to make sure I don't want to have this ga.js file anymore and index.html. And now I also need to go and grab from my downloads. Where was that? Uh, I need to grab that bestbird.json file. Uh, I'm going to go to the desktop and put it in Flappy Bird. So now this best bird, this is the data from that best bird that I saved. And I should be able to go back to Sketch and say best, I called it best underscore bird. So 
Give me a second here, and let's run that sketch. I'm going to run a little web server so I can, oops, I will run it on a different port. So now I'm going to go to localhost 8001 and I have some errors. Um, counter is not defined. So I'm using, I, I left this counter thing in there which is totally irrelevant. Oh no, I do need counter. Oh, I do want counter. So I need to have the, the counter I need, that's my frame count to know how many pipes. Uh, I is not defined in sketch.js line 36. Pipes, ooh, this should not be a bracket there, right? Because this is me checking all of the pipes. Unexpected end of input sketch. All right, so I think I'm missing yet another curly bracket here. And there we go. So this should be that bird. Right? So now I've loaded the one that I trained. Oh, yay, that worked. I loaded the one that I trained. How exciting. So now what could I do? Let me just to be sure that this is working. Let me go back to the other sketch. All right, and let me save another one. So I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to save like a bad one because I'm, I'm, this is just going to be an arbitrary one, right? So I'm going to hit S and I'm going to get this one. And this one I'm going to call bad bird. And I'm going to go to back to my sketch. And I'm going to put bad bird in there. So now I have, whoops, what is this? Sublime is open. Um, I have bad bird. This is all of the weights for the bird that wasn't really trained. These are the weights for the bird that was trained. So if I go here, if I go back to my code and go to sketch.js, you know, and I could, what I, what would be interesting is to run both of them, like to load a few different birds, but now I'm going to load the one that doesn't do well. Let's just see. And let me, by the way, let me set the slider, the default of the slider to, um, whoops, where did I create that slider? Um, oh yeah, sorry. Let me set the default of the slider to three just so it starts sped up. Whoops, I'm in the wrong sketch. So now this is the bad one. Bad one's pretty good. You can see the bad one's not doing very well, right? As opposed to the good one. Which is not colliding. It really should be. Is the collision thing actually saying collide? Did it say it when I did the bad one? Yeah, it is. Okay, you can see that I'm getting lots and lots of collisions with the one that wasn't trained well. So again, this could use a lot of refinement. Like maybe I want to think more systematically. Maybe I want to have an electron app that's actually doing the training and saves the JSON file so I could have some file management. Uh, maybe you're asking yourself, what's an electron app? It's a way of wrapping a, a web page basically into a desktop application so you have more control over your file system. I could write a node. I could have a server-side program written in Node that is managing saving JSON files of birds that I've trained and reloading them. Or I could make a bird, flappy bird, API. I'm just going to give you all these different trained birds for different situations. So there's a lot of ways you could go forward with this. So hopefully you got something out of this. I think, dare I say, I'm, there could be a part six. But right now, this part five really wraps it up. Um, I will say that even though, so you're going on the Coding Train website, you will find the exact code for both of these examples. Um, in their kind of raw state, but I'm also making a separate example that I've demonstrated, I, I don't, um, which uh, is uh, here. I'm just going to quickly load it up. That's going that that has a bit more interface stuff to it. So I will also link to this example that will have a bit more. That'll be a bit nicer. Like I'm going to do have a save and a load button in here. So this one already has the feature now. If I speed it up and train it for a little bit. Train, 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 train. That I could then say, hey, just show me the one that's done the best so far. So and so now I could save that one and load that one. So I will create that stuff. I'll make that example available. But as an exercise for yourself, try to make it. What can you do? Add some design. Add some saving and loading. Have have a computer bird compute compete with a human player bird. I don't know. Be creative. Make something. Share it with me. And I hope to see you in a future video.
Uh, oh my God, 86 new messages. I'm so not checking out the chat. Anything important? Um, like Alessi and said, maybe you could explore going into something like cookies or local storage. Oh, what? If, oh, yeah. Cookies or local storage. That is a good idea. Um, I should do that, yes. I would like to do that. Um, all right, how did I do? Is that going to turn into something that I can release? Just hold on. Let me check something. Da, 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 da. I'm not checking my email. I'm totally not checking my email. Hmm, no messages, nothing important. Okay. Um, right, local storage is perfect since you need to serialize anyway. That is a good point. Is this the end? The end is just a little hot hot away. will be. Anyway, um, is this the end? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Um, it seems that for every new iteration, 90% collide right away. Yeah, that's probably because there's a lot of mutation going on, so most of them are just going to do wildly incorrect things. Uh, review some pull requests. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Oh. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. It's actually written in here. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. This, ah, that's, that's all local, that's all you need to do to use local storage? Seriously? Amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, can we fix the collide part? Yeah. Yeah. I would take a pull request to fix that because I don't really feel like it. What did I do? Um, oh, it's funny, I still have the highlight thing in it. So I'm just checking if the bird is in between the top and the bottom and the X and the Y. So I'm not taking in consideration the size. So I really should be saying like the bird radius, right? Right now, the bird, it doesn't actually have a size. The bird is just... So this is the issue with the, um, the collision. Like, if I do this, this is actually exactly the same, right? This is exactly the same as if I do this. So this is basically what it's collision detection. Look at the Um, so I probably should, if I wanted to fix this, oh, if I wanted to fix this, I would have to make this dot R. The thing is, I didn't train it with a radius. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stop myself. I'm not going to do that right now. I would gladly accept a pull request. I could certainly make a part seven, but that's the issue. You just need to add the radius and then this. Uh, if statement here would need to take in account that radius. Could you round the corners of the obstacles? Yeah. A save and load button might be nicer than a key press. You think? You think? Yes. That's a very good point. Flappy mosquito. Uh, um, all right. Uh, <laughs> part seven. So I'm trying to think here. 545. I've got to get going soon. Uh, but what I wanted to do, let's do the follow. I need to do this anyway. So let's, um, give me a second here. What I want to do is, um, let me let you see what I'm doing here. 
oh, I should really set up, I should fix the camera. Oh, do I have, what's the chance? Oh no, I don't have a, I need a memory card reader. I, I, I think I should lie, I should do a live magic lantern chat. Oh no, no, wait, 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 wait. I think I don't want documentation. Do I? I don't care. Do I, is there a problem if I document me using magic lantern? Um, by the way, how did I do that thing before where I just kept layering on? Oh, yes, I had the live thing. Okay. Uh, now, hold on. Um, I don't have, uh, I have stuff downstairs that I could use. Oh, but I was going to do something else. Oh, yeah. Okay. So hold on. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, let me set up iTerm. <laughs> nah. Uh, let me go to NOC S18. So now I've got the, the new neuroevolution steering. And let me open that up. And let me go in here. Actually, let me just, uh, let me open this in Adam. You know what I was thinking of making a video? By the way, I was thinking of making a video of just kind of like what is tensorflow.js. Maybe I'll do that before I go, but let me do this other thing. I, I, I want to do tutorials with it, but I'm not really ready to do that. Um, okay, so sketch vehicle. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is I am now looking at this other demonstration of neuroevolution. Whoa. Oh, whoops. No, wait. Oh, there we go. This is another demonstration of neuroevolution I talked about at the beginning of this live stream. Um, and, um, but what I want to do is kind of like just go through and add some comments and clean up the code a little bit. Um, so uh, let me do that because I, I want to release this for my class. Okay, so let's see. This is an array of vehicles. That's correct. This is an array of food. This is show addition. Uh, uh, this is really a checkbox to show additional uh, info. This is a uh, slider to speed up simulation. Uh, how, how big is the food? How much food should there be? So these are all, I'm just gonna add comments to this. Uh, how many sensors does each vehicle have? How far can each vehicle C. Okay. So add the canvas, grab the checkbox and slider. I think the default angle mode in P5 is radian, so I don't think to need to do that. So this is uh, now so this is create initial population. I think I could simplify this right now to just have the vehicles spawn in a random location. So let's actually um, just build that in here. It's going to make things simpler. Um, and then the constructor just needs the brain object. And here I can just say if brain, right, if there's an actual brain object. So that, that simplifies things a little bit. Um, okay, back to sketch. Um, this is how, how fast should we speed up variable to keep track of highest scoring vehicle. Um, so this, uh, okay, run the simulation cycles amount of time. Okay, so this is always keep a minimum amount of food. So the first thing that I do is if the amount of food is less than a certain amount, just add more food. And there's, a, there's this like buffer here 
And that should probably be a global variable. And that's really like food buffer equals 50. So let's put that here. Uh, don't put food near the edge. You know, a lot of these things are kind of silly. They're just in there in, in sort of like trying things out. So this should now be a food buffer, food buffer, food buffer, food buffer. And interestingly enough, there's another place where I use that value, which is in the neural network's inputs right here. Whoops. So this is food buffer. I'll come back to this in a little bit. Um, all right. So now, uh, eat any food. Great. Go through all the vehicles and find the best. So this is looping through all that. Am I removing stuff here? Yes. So I need to loop through backwards. This is a little bit silly. If I'm finding the best and, OK, so, so this is like think and update every vehicle. If the vehicle is dead, remove it. Otherwise, it's a candidate to be the best. If its score is higher than the record, um, so save it. Now, if there is less than 20, apply reproduction. So I'm only going to reproduce the vehicles if they're less than 20. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I should always allow them to reproduce. I don't know. Let's leave that in there. So this would be max or minimum population. I don't know. This should probably be a variable too. I'm going to leave that right now. For every vehicle, um, create a child vehicle with a probability based on the score divided by the record. So I kind of feel like maybe, uh, I think this is fine. So this is kind of arbitrary, but I'm going to leave that. And as long as it did produce one, um, add it to the population. Um, okay. According to score, uh, argument to birth is probability. And then here, if, if there is a child, then push that. All right, oh, let me just check the chat here. Um, okay, so now this is drawing all the food. There's no poison involved. And just this is just drawing all the food, arbitrary colors. This is if it's D and debug, highlight the best. So this is highlight the best if in debug mode. And then uh, draw all the vehicles. OK. Let's see. How, let's see if I didn't break anything. Ah, oh, brain.copy is not a function. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, let's see. I broke something. I probably should have tested a little bit more in the interim. <laughs> uh, what line of code was that? Uh, Vehicle.js line 37. If brain. Okay, so what did I do here? Um, let's see what this is. Undefined. Oh, it got a number. Oh, because I forgot when I create them, probably in the birth function, so anywhere I make a new vehicle, Let's look for that. I'm giving it the location, which I don't want to do. So I just want to pass in the brain. That should fix it. Uh, new, so this should say new vehicle with brain copy. And then I guess the, it, uh, it mutates here. That's fine. So it should mutate here. Okay. All right, uh, I can take out the console log now that that's fixed. All right, let's just let this run for a little bit. Ah, so me, I am so me uh, writes in the chat, um, um, my reasoning behind population length, population length limit is that when they get really good, they outcompete for food and all score really low. So that makes sense to like limit the population because if there's too many cloning themselves, they'll run out of food. So let's just uh, let this run for a while and see if it's doing something that feels somewhat logical. 
Um, I, uh, yep, this looks pretty good. You can see this one over here is doing really well. It needs to find something though. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, come on, you can do it. Oh, this one is good. This one is like, I can't believe it's not the high scorer. It's gonna be soon enough. Where'd it go? Come back. Oh, it's gonna get stuck. That's sad. It's gonna get stuck. Oh, I'm standing in front of it. It's gonna get stuck over here. So hopefully one, someday one will overtake it. This one is doing well now. Ah, so they get really stuck here on the edges because they've kind of learned to like move away. But then as soon as they move away, they're trying to go back. So I'm, it's kind of interesting. I don't know how to deal with that well, but they're, they're learning. Okay, so you can see there's a bunch getting stuck in the corner. That's fine. All right, so things are working well. Now, let me go back to vehicle. So this is, this, this is a class for an individual sensor. So the vector describes the sensor's uh, direction. And, you know, I almost feel like it might make more sense to give it an angle here. So um, right here, I, I kind of feel like I want the sensor to get an angle. I don't know why. I want to refactor this and have the, it make the vector from the angle. Um, so it's just a unit vector. So I'm going to call this direction instead of vector, vec. That might be silly. And then the value. So the idea of each sensor is each sensor is, if I could just uh, slow this down for a second, I should have a pause button, but I'll just say no loop. Each sensor is emanating from each vehicle. It has eight surrounding it. And the debug mode only draws it if it sort of like detects it's near a piece of food. And the thickness is, relates to how near it is to that food. So the idea of the sensor is that this is the sensor's direction and this is the sensor's reading, the value. Like, and I guess it's, I think it's zero if it's not detecting anything and one if it's like detecting the food all the way there, but we'll find out. So this is a class for an individual sensor. Each vehicle will have N sensors. This is the class for each vehicle. A vehicle can be made from a brain. Neural network. Okay, so I'm commenting this. So this is all the physics stuff, right? Acceleration, velocity, position. Interestingly enough, I sort of feel like, right? See, this is a little cleaner just to give it no velocity. I've broken too many things. Okay, so I, because I changed this up here, <laughs> I gotta fix this. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that. And I know I could be using, um, uh, let me uh, search for this with, okay. So this is actually now the direction here. This is now, I, I could have used a tool that would actually like re, but that, that should have fixed that. All right, so what was I double checking? Um, I was up here and, oh wait, all the physics stuff. Um, right, does it matter if I just give them no velocity when they start? I think I prefer that. Why have them moving at a random location? Okay. Another super chat from Isaiah. <laughs> Thank you, Isaiah. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you, Isaiah Federer. Thank you. Um, you're welcome to join the Patreon if you want. That your, <laughs> your credit is good. Um, okay, um, so now all the physics stuff. Oh, this is silly. That's unnecessary if they have no velocity to begin with. Uh, and now, this is, this denotes, this indicates how well it's doing. This is really like fitness more. It's really more like fitness, but we'll call it score. Oh, this, sensor angle. So this doesn't need to be a variable. I, this can be, this is never changing. So this variable, I think, I'm, I'm kind of oh, abusing global variables a little bit, but let me take this out here. This doesn't really, it's, this is kind of a global constant and um, really would go here. 
what's, so this is, what's the angle in between sensors? Don't autofill for me. And then now I'd be saying this. And this is not, this is not gonna know, it's not gonna know what 2 pi is, is. 2 pi is out here, so I can say math.pi times 2. Because that's a P5 uh, built in variable, and the P5 variables aren't available until setup happens. All right. So now, this is now a global variable. So uh, create an array of sensors and um, if a brain is passed via constructor, copy it. Otherwise, make a new brain. Uh, inputs are, whoops, inputs are all the sensors plus position and velocity info. So again, I could be more thoughtful about this, dot sensors dot length plus six, but that will work. Uh, two out um, arbitrary hidden layer and two outputs for x and y vol uh, desired velocity. So this neural network takes in all the sensor readings, some position and velocity information, and then spits out an x and y um, desired velocity. Health, uh, health keeps vehicle alive. Okay, so this is um, update called each frame, each time step. Um, physics, uh, so, okay, fine. Update, update velocity limits speed to max. Keep speed at a minimum. Yeah, that's fine. At a minimum, update velocity. No, update position. And then reset acceleration. Slowly die. <laughs> I'll just say decrease health. Decrease health. Increase, increase score. Okay, now, dead. Return true if health, is if health is less than zero or if vehicle leaves the canvas. That's what's going on here. Uh, I'm gonna call this clone. Is that a reserved word in JavaScript, clone? I feel like I'd rather call this clone than over birth. It's a bit more, of, I think, an appropriate term. Uh, argument to clone is probability. Uh, and I'm going to say this, uh, I'm going to call this new vehicle rather than child. I think that's probably better. And uh, so this function is called clone. Uh, make a copy of this vehicle uh, um, according to probability. Um, so pick a, ra uh, pick a random number. Um, okay, otherwise will return undefined. Okay, so now clone is not reserved, thank you. Um, so now, this by the way is what, well, this, this, uh, this is not gonna, this is only gonna live in this live stream. I'm not gonna make a tutorial out of this or anything, like that's standalone, but I'm, you're watching this, so hopefully this is <laughs> something to watch. Um, okay, so all sensors start with the maximum length. Then, okay, so this is a function to calculate all the sensor readings and predict a desired velocity. That's right, think. List is the list of food. Maybe I should just call this food List is a little bit weird, so let's call this food. 
It'll be a little clearer, I think. Um, okay, all sensors start with maximum length, then iterate over all the food. The food, other position is the food position. That's fine, that's a good name. Where is the food? How far away? Skip if it's too far away, if it's too far away. Otherwise, what is, what is vector pointing to food? So now I take a, I make a vector pointing from um, uh, this position to the food's position. Then I check all the sensors, okay? The delta is the angle between the sensor's angle and the food's ang angle. So this, what's going on here is, um, in this example, is the idea is that I have a vehicle. It has all of these sensors poking out of it. And maybe there's a piece of food right here. So what I'm looking for is, from here, I calculate the vector pointing to the food. And then I calculate the delta relative to every one of these sensors. Right? What's the angle in between every one of these sensors? And if the angle between is within a given threshold, and now here's the thing. That angle in between is just that checking the delta if it's, you know, if it's this closest sensor. But I might want to, I mean, this is an interesting question for this. Like, so right now, right, it technically um, it's going to, like if the food is here, this sensor is going to, oh, sorry, I should say, if, let's say the sensor reaches out to here. This sensor is going to light up because it's kind of, it's within the halfway point between these two sensors, this piece of food, but it's not actually intersecting it. So I might actually really want to be more thoughtful about like doing some kind of detection of like within a certain range, but I'm not going to worry about that. This is pretty good, close enough. So this is checking the delta, and then if this food is closer than the previous one, so then uh, replace the sensor's value. So actually, the sensor's value is 50, or the sensor length. Otherwise, it's, it, the sensor's value is just the, cl the value of the closest piece of food. And if it doesn't see any food, its value is the total. Okay, so that works. Um, now I have to create the inputs. So I'm gonna just say, this is goofy, but uh, these inputs are mapped, these four inputs are mapped to distance from edges. Then these inputs are the current velocity vector. And then now all of the sensor readings. These are all the sensor readings. Um, and now the sensor readings get mapped then in the inverse. So if, the, if, if there's a food zero pixel, a piece of food zero pixels from the vehicle, its sensor, its input to the neural network is one. If it's at the, uh, if it's the maximum, its input is zero. Then I get the outputs. The outputs I map to a velocity vector between negative one and one. This is kind of, mm. I wonder if the outputs should actually be the angle and magnitude. Would that make any sense more than the x and y amount? I mean, really what would make more sense for this would be to basically like think about the outputs being a joystick. And the joystick is saying like just how much to turn left or right how much to speed up or how much to slow down, that probably would make the most sense. But I don't really, so I could, but, but I'm gonna leave this as, I'm gonna leave this for what it is. I'm sort of, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna try it with the angle in a second. So turn desired velocity in and apply the steering formula. Craig Reynolds steering formula. Then apply the force. Um, yeah, right. So me, I am to me is making a good point, which is that all the inputs are kind of based on x, y values. <laughs> so if I expect my outputs to suddenly be like angle and magnitude, 
that might. But you know, with if I had a more maybe more hidden layers, it should you know, no way a, a neural network is as a universal function approximator should be able to convert from an x y coordinate system to a polar coordinate system. Um, so now, okay, check against array of food. Uh, calculate distance if we're within food radius. If we are in, if vehicle is within food radius, um, remove that piece of food, increase the health, apply force, display, color based on health, um, uh, translate to vehicle position, uh, draw lines for all the activated sensors. Um, so this just looks at all the sensors. If the value is greater than zero, draw a line for it. Um, and then uh, also draw text, score, draw score, um, display score next to each vehicle. Uh, then draw a triangle rotating in the direction of velocity. That's what this is. This is a uh, highlight with a gray bubble. <laughs> so I think I'm done now commenting this. This is the wrong URL. Nature of code 2018. All right, is this still working or what did I break? All right, it's not refreshing for me. Okay, I didn't break anything. So let's let this run for a while. Okay, I'm gonna let this run for a while and see how it performs. Um, please, oh yeah, don't worry. The, this is gonna get uploaded and I'm looking for contributions. Now, let me be clear. I'm not looking for contributions to necessarily, I mean, I am looking for contributions to make this better, but let me quali qualify that with what makes this better. This is meant to be an example demonstration. So th certain things that would make this better would be adding a lot of features to it. But um, I don't want to add features to it. I want, um, I just, I want it to be as, as simple. So I would like it to perform better. Wait, what, what just happened here? Why did it, that was weird. I don't remember dragging it back to one. Did I hit refresh or something? I want to let this run for a little while. So in other words, I would like it to uh, work better in, in a sense like evolve smarter vehicles that collect the food uh, with greater efficiency. But um, I don't want to overcomplicate it or add a lot of features to make this a big complex um, simulation. So, but if you make something from this, I would love to learn about it and see it and link out to that. So creative projects that have more design ideas and feature ideas, I would like to link out to. But fixes and things to, anything to simplify this or to make it more clear from an educational point of view or to Im improve the efficiency of the food collection evolution, I would love. So let's, I just ran this for a while. Let's take a look at it now. So let me slow it down and kind of zoom in. You know, it's doing something. It's clearly doing something different than where it started. So, and you can see it's speeding up. As this one detected it, it sped right up and to go to it. So that's good. Like, now it, this one seems to only be able to like, it's really only learned one of its sensors. And you can see how they get stuck in between them and why uh, now it's sort of figured that out. So, you know, again, they have to learn over time. Now, maybe I need multiple hidden layers. This, maybe this is a complex enough problem that the neural network actually needs multiple hidden layers. I don't know about that. I mean, I could, I could try adding more nodes, but I don't, I, at a certain point, like more nodes in one hidden layer isn't as powerful as multiple hidden layers because you create many more combinations of parameters. Um, 
So, um, same player in the chat writes, please create a Discord server, Dan. I believe there is an unofficial, um, whatever that means, a Discord server. I would be happy to log into it or try it, but I, the official like Coding Train community, um, well, is the YouTube community. Um, I'm also available on Twitter at Shiftman, but um, there is a Slack channel that is for Patreon subscribers. So that's kind of how I create um, some discussion and this is the equivalent of kind of like signing up for the class, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Don't, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you get from that. But it's a smaller community of people who have signed up for the Patreon. That I'm using Slack rather than the Discord. Um, uh, ben writes, hey, Coding Train, I started watching your videos two years ago and I'm now working as a back-end web developer. I love hearing that. That's wonderful. Um, so let's see how this is performing over time now. So, you know, look, this one has lasted, this one has a score of 5,000. I have not seen it now. I'm sadly to say that I think unless a piece of food spawns over here. Oh, oh, come on, you can do it. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So this one has really lasted a long time. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of just waiting for food, food to spawn near it. They don't seem to be able to evolve. Right now, what would be really effective is for them to evolve a good wandering strategy to like really explore if there's no food near them. They seem to be stuck going in circles in this corner. But this one is definitely the highest score. You can see it highlighted here. Um, we can like look at this one here, what it's doing. It's kind of collecting that food. Now it has nothing. Do we still have our friend who's got like a score of like 6,000 right now <laughs> moving in circles? So it's really interesting to see what this has done. Uh, let me speed this up. Let me let me let some a bunch more generations go. Uh, Slack is definitely better for a programming related group and less linear conversation. Well, that's good. Um, I have been thinking about doing some. One thing I would like to do someday with the channel is like a kind of call in office hours type thing. Um, Zach Lieberman does these open office. If you don't know Zach Lieberman, follow him on Twitter. He has, makes amazing like daily sketches using open, one of the core developers of open frameworks. He does this open office hours thing. It's not, it's not broadcast, it's private. <laughs> People can just sign up and Skype in and have free office hours with Zach, which is kind of amazing, or meet in person. Um, and I've always wanted to do something like that as well, but haven't sort of figured out a way to do that. All right, let's slow this back down. I probably should just highlight the score of the best one. Where is the best one? Oh, it's over here. Look at them. What is it that causes them to evolve this like swirling behavior in the corners? I wonder if the food buffer is actually a bit of an issue. Like right now the food cannot spawn. Is, that, is this exactly like 50 pixels from the edge? Maybe, right? This is probably about 50 pixels from the edge, that food buffer variable. Um, you know, I could have, one thing is I could add wrap, so instead of like having to learn to like not leave, I could let them leave and come back, but, um, ah, carry KH got the same kinds of results, that's good to know. So I would like to build this as a coding challenge. Look at this, you can see like they've eaten all the food <laughs> down here. So then when a new one spawns, they spawn in a random location, they can kind of find some of the food that's up here yet. Where's the best one? It's still here. It's gonna like lose its health soon enough. That's the thing, they eat so much food, they become these like gluttonous vehicles that have just collected so much health. It lasts for so long. I wonder if I should like they should have to continue to eat more quickly to survive. Um, I think the reason is they learned, me, I am Samir, they learned to respond to the buffer by moving in the inverse direction, but not directly. Oh, I've got to go. So when they hit the buffer, they drift to one side. Y divided by height, same for X, no buffer into account. I'm not sure what that means, TMC. Uh, max health saturation. Yeah, I think, like, I think probably limiting their, either limiting a maximum health. Let's try adding that. So uh, let's say max health. I'm just going to say it's two for right now. Um, and this dot health. Um, 
um, this.health uh, zero and max health. Can you have stat I know you can have static functions in JavaScript. Can you have static variables? Because a lot of these constants would sort of make sense as static properties of the vehicle. But I don't, I don't think you can do that. Like I kind of, I've, some things are properties of the vehicle and then some things are like these global variables because they don't really change. So I don't know. Those should be um, constants as well. Okay, let's see. Let's try max health. What did I call it? Um, max health. Static properties are coming, but not yet. Right. So food isn't useful when you don't need it. Let's try this. Um, let me just look at like any random element of the population. What's its max health is two, and its health was some negative because it died. So I can't tell. The thing is that I don't have a good sense of what a reasonable. <laughs> oh, I, I have the best one. So hold on. Let me take out the max health for a second. So in theory, I have always the best one here. Uh, oh no, it's a local variable. Let me make that a global variable so I can examine it. In the console. So the best one's health is like almost two right now. Now it died, that one died. Oh, will this update in real time? It won't, right? But I can, what I should just say is best.health. Oh, 18. Yeah, it got, gets, could get really high. I guess it goes down pretty fast. I don't know what's a reasonable thing to cap it at. Um, <laughs> What, what, uh, me, I am to me is suggesting that you set interval to log the health. You don't like, I like to do it manually like this. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right. Um, so let me add that in now. Anybody, anybody have suggestions for what a good something to try as a maximum health? I tried two. Let me limit it. Where did I do that? Let's try three. Let's not be so aggressive. Let's just limit it to three. Um, and so let me constrain it. And let's let it run for a little bit. As soon as I get that thing where I can copy paste from one computer to another setup. Um, static and const are not the same thing. That's correct. Um, all right, so now let's see what this does. Uh, like I think they're going to die much more quickly and not, so they're not really going to get stuck at the edge. So the, the thing is, can they figure out to move more towards the center, to wander more? I don't know. Um, you can see they're still getting stuck at the edge, but they're dying more quickly. This one's doing really well. Like look how like well it's just picking up the food. It probably needs also like a little bit more maximum force because it, it's difficult for it to steer. Um, but it does it. Now, see, now it's stuck. I mean, the other thing is I could give them much further sensors. And I don't know if this defeats the purpose, but like I could say the vehicles, I have to I could tweak this stuff forever. Like if I make the sensor length 150, like watch what happens now. They can really, they're really like, they're probably, I would think, not going to get stuck as much on the edge because they're going to pick up food, even if they're like far away from the food. So let me run this for a little bit. Max health should be pi. Add an input for its health. That's interesting. Right? If its health is getting low, should it do something different? I don't know. So let me like do this. Now the thing is that the way I have this debug view, it's sort of hard to see them. But let me take that off. So what do we see now? 
it looks like sort of more reasonable, right? Like I don't see them getting stuck along the edge. I actually kind of like this. Let's speed it up a little bit. Right? Does this, I, the problem is there's a lot of noise to the sensors because they're going to see so many more pieces of food. But, so they're, they're kind of acting a little crazier in the center, but they're not getting stuck at the edge because they're detecting the food. So this is certainly better, I think. This is pretty interesting to watch. The, real, the thing that I would like to do now is turn off debug and watch it like more slowly over time. Like, can we really see? Like if I sit here, I'm going to zoom in. Like this is not really sped up. Can we really get a sense of watching this evolution now? Max health equals pi. So even over without it really sped up over a little bit of time, we're seeing this evolutionary behavior. I kind of liked it when I made it lose score when it accelerated. That's interesting. But I, what I like, though, is I like these little moments when they get a burst of speed and then they slow down. So, um, But anyway, there's so many properties here. I'll let, I'm going to let, let me, let me upload this. So I'm going to put this in, in a couple different, actually, I, where am I going to put this? Hmm, all right. Um, uh, git add um, changes made during a live stream to improve the simulation. What? Live stream changes. Dear diary. Today on the coding train, I tried something new. Instead of making a tutorial, I just pulled up an example I'd been working on for quite some time. <laughs> and I um, added comments to it. Then I became obsessed with tuning it, tuning it, and against and tuning it. But I really, whoops, but I really, but I really should go home and have dinner now because. It's late. Maybe tomorrow, oh, maybe tomorrow, the pull request fairy will visit me with some nice improvements. Mind you, I don't want to make the code more complex. So improvements, by improvements, I really mean simplifications or small changes that improve the 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 <laughs> the <laughs> evolutionary scenary the evolutionary uh, algorithm or neural network model. I hope this example inspires some interesting work. Special thanks to me, I am so me, for their contributions, and also to uh, Darius Kazemi, uh, GitHub, to Darius K for inspiring me to think of git commits as a diary. Sincerely yours, 
Daniel Chief Maman. Okay. All right. So now <laughs> I'm going to close this and hey, where'd it go? Don't tell me I lost it. Close. Okay, please. <laughs> I would hate to lose that. Uh, get status. Get, oh, I'm in neuro. Oh, I'm on branch neuro. That's fine. Get push origin neuro. I mean, this is kind of unnecessary, but I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to pull request it to myself. <laughs> uh, see, look. Create pull request. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to merge. Okay, so that is uh, completed. And um, so I, 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 I think I'll leave this here for a little bit longer just in this repo. Ultimately, this is going to get moved to here. So ultimately the idea, right now I have in the neural network library an XOR example, an MNIST example. Actually, the MNIST example is kind of broken, I think. Doodle classification and the neuroevolution flappy bird. So eventually the neuroevolution flappy bird uh, steering will make its way here. And then, and then, and then. I'm going to start remaking these examples. The first one being the doodle classifier with tensorflow.js. So that's my plan. That, hopefully I'm going to get to that next week. Um, all right, so thank you everybody for watching and tuning into this live stream. I'm just going to check my email. Oh, this is good. These are some good messages. These are some really good messages. They're not what I'm looking for right now. Okay, so I am really hoping to be back here. Let me just say, I'm hoping to actually do a live stream this Saturday morning. Um, and there's a project that I'm uh, looking to investigate. It's related, to, it's related to Google CS First and Earth Day and their Google Logo Challenge, but I'm sort of waiting to hear back from uh, the Google education team, I think, to uh, get some feedback about what would make the most sense for me to do. So uh, if I get it together, I'm making no promises right now, but uh, Saturday morning, probably around 10 a.m. Well, I have to be done by 11.30 a.m. But an hour and a half is probably enough time. <laughs> I mean, it probably isn't, but I also might just record a video offline and release it on Saturday. So stay tuned. Hopefully on Saturday there will be a live stream or a new upload um, looking at uh, doing an Earth Day challenge with the Google logo. So that's something I'm thinking about doing. If you have any ideas or thoughts about that, uh, please let me know. Okay, so um, thank you everybody. Um, I'm going to be gone now. Wait. I don't have it yet, but apparently I'm told I could have an outro. So instead of just pressing like stop on the live stream, there could be like this outro. Actually, let me try this. Here's going to be my outro. Um, oh, I'm not there. Let's see if we can make this work. Um, wait, how do I? How do I do this? Um, oh, closing Jerry live. Pressing like oh. stop. And then if I go over to here, and then, right, if I go here, and I, and I do something weird, and then I come back over here, waiting, at a certain point, <laughs> the duplication thing should happen, right? Okay. Oh my god, he's giant! Ah! <laughs> it's a giant shipman! Oh my goodness, it's a giant shipman. That's not good. Oh, I think this should be blank. I shouldn't be in that. That's the problem, right? Because. Oh wait, no, now it's going to do this again. How do I get it without this like opening sequence thing? Oh, this is so much duplication. Uh, oh, now I'm back. Okay, let's see. Oh. <laughs> it's crunching your head. It's crunching your head. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, it's a giant. <laughs> oh, 
This is my outro. How do I, it's going to take forever to get to so many because I've had this whole long process of so many people. Yeah. This, by the way, I find very entertaining. <laughs> If you find it entertaining, if you if you're actually still watching at this point, you know, yeah, it's pretty scary. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for watching the coding train. <laughs> Don't stop. <clears throat> oh, oh, my back hurts. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I guess it works better if I just have this open because. There definitely needs to be one wearing a like a uh, conductor's cap. <laughs> right? Also perhaps a uh Let's make sure the camera doesn't shut off. Well, this is bad for me to go in front of it. That's really bad. Uh, unicorn hoodie is probably a good thing to add to this. <laughs> okay, now I think we're finally ready <laughs> for me to read the random numbers. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> 4,053, 17,715, 43,400, 34,522, 68,089, 30,355, 20,322, 52,333, 76,076, and uh, 91,727. All right. Thanks for watching The Coding Train. <laughs> this has been... The Coding Train with me, your host, <laughs> Daniel Schiffman. Who, what is the, we, <laughs> the, 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 the unicorn hoodie is kind of hilarious, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like the quality of the background is like degrading over time. That's kind of interesting. Why is it doing that? Where's the unicorn hoodie? The unicorn hoodie is my favorite part. Come on back, unicorn hoodie. Come on back, you know, that, no, no, that's the, oh, there's the unicorn. Okay, everybody out of the way. The unicorn hoodie is the, it's, it's there, back there. Ah, oh my God. Oh, this is really, the video compression is totally insane, right? Um, I mean, what would happen if I just, oh, wait, oh, whoa. Oh, ah, no, no, okay. This is, this is over now, goodbye. Uh, um, I, um, oh yeah. Oh, this is crazy what it's doing. All right, let me, uh, right, okay, so I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> oh, the SpaceX stream started. Oh, I have, I have good, I have a good idea. Uh, SpaceX. Uh, live stream. Okay. Oh, it's gone now. <laughs> Somehow I thought, wait a sec. Oh, no, no, wait. What am I watching here? I'm so confused. Oh, because I'm not watching my stream anymore. I'm like, why am I not duplicating anymore? I'm just going to sit here and wait for the SpaceX stream. Is it going to launch? How long till it launches? Oh, 11 minutes? People want to hear the. Two thirds of the rocket is our booster stage, and that, along with the nine Merlin engines, is what does the. Pulse Hold on, let me let me make it so you can watch both the coding train. I'm going to rebroadcast. Is, am I going to get in trouble for rebroadcasting the SpaceX stream? I don't think so. Whoops. We're going to attempt to land this stage today on the drone ship after it separates from the upper stage. Now that upper stage, or stage two, as we call it. That's right on top of stage one. And How's the has volume? a single MVAC engine on it. That's Merlin vacuum engine. That's the engine that ignites after stage one separates and begins its journey back to Earth. The second stage is what's going to carry tests from the edge of space and accelerate it to 
orbital speeds of just over seven and a half kilometers per second. Now TESS is currently sitting on the very top of that stack inside of our 17 foot diameter payload fairing. That's that nose cone structure you see on your screen up top. The fairing is what protects Ooh. the spacecraft from aerothermal heating and loads as we launch it into space. Once we reach vacuum, we're going to have two halves of that nose cone of that fairing. I think I kind of want to wait the 10 minutes. Earth because we don't need them anymore. Now Let the trust just... structure that you see on your screen there, that is referred to as our transporter erector. This is what we use not only to roll the rocket out of the hangar and to the pad and then to lift it up and support it in its vertical position, but it's also what routes Falcon 9's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems all the way to the vehicle itself and does so until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and launches and clears the pad. At that point, the vehicle's internal flight computer and automation and radio frequency communication is what's going to take over. Uh. Now, following su successful deployment of the of the test space there we go. This is going to be the 52nd Falcon 9 I improved launch, the quality. The 24th Falcon 9 landing if we're successful today, and SpaceX's eighth launch this year. I'm going to wait. I just I had my own commentary. I don't have anything. Good. You know what I would like to do is do like a lunar lander challenge. Somebody on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter, sent me um, uh, lunar, like a uh, lunar lander simulation. I mean, it's obviously much simpler than. Oh, and um, coding STEM, Operators STEM coding, which is a wonderful YouTube channel. Minus um, seventy minutes. With a lot of uh, run by uh, Chris Orban, by if I'm saying the name correctly. That is, they um, consume some, a fuel, some, has some which is RP1, and an oxidizer, which is liquid oxygen. Fuel is about ninety percent or so loaded on the rocket in stage. Uh, sorry, on stage one, and seventy-five percent loaded on stage two. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, RP-1, the fuel, is fully loaded on stage one and two. And it's LOX that's about 90% loaded on stage one uh, and 75% loaded on stage Toby Strong asks, two. what's the music you use at the now, start when you're waiting? Is it's that by super um, at Adam Blau uh, on Twitter. It's called Tori the Dog. Um, Adam Blau is and a film and television composer in Los Angeles. He's a, a, a friend of mine. And uh, he's somebody, he sent me a bunch of music tracks. He's actually the com composer of the Coding Train song and the former Coding Rainbow song. So that when we start feeding them their full flow of liquid oxygen in flight, that lock stays nice and cold and doesn't. You can manage the landing of a rocket with the gym. It, so yeah, exactly, exactly what I want to do. I would love to do a neuroevolution uh, lunar lander. It's sounding kind of like we are looking good for an on-time launch today. I'm not hearing about any issues with upper-level clouds. Our ground-level winds are looking within limits, as are those upper-level winds, and we're within our lightning rules. Spacecraft is currently healthy. It's on internal power, and the range is currently go for an on-time launch. Was there a today. super chat? I missed that. Thank you, super chat. Um, now I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> literally looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that music is anywhere. We're waiting for the launch. So today's mission is really, really cool. We are launching NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Come on, SpaceX. You can do it. You can launch. T minus seven minutes, everybody. Let's do our exercises. Ooh, ooh. Look at that rocket. Oh, it's very exciting. Ooh, ooh. Let's listen to what she's saying. Oops, wrong. Ah, not wrong. Ah. Oh. How come I don't hear it anymore? Four oh. high-tech, wide field of view cameras designed and manufactured by MIT's Lincoln Laboratory. Cool. These cameras will allow tests to detect exoplanets, which are planets that are outside of our solar system. Wow. It does this by looking for a phenomenon known as a transit. This is where a planet passes in front of its host star causing a periodic dip in that star's brightness. This allows scientists to assess the size, mass, atmospheric composition, and structure of those planets. And this is particularly exciting to astrophysicists and astrobiologists because some of those planets may fall into what is referred to as the habitable zone. That means it might have the right conditions to sustain liquid water and potentially support life. Falcon 9 will be ingesting tests. Thank you, TRASH227 for the super That chat. at its highest point reaches 273,000 kilometers. 
That's over two thirds of the way to our moon. After test separates from Falcon 9 over the next 60 days, the spacecraft will use its onboard thrusters to perform a series of maneuvers, which includes a flyby of the moon in order to slingshot it into its final high Earth science cool. orbit. This orbit is what's going to give TESS an unobstructed view of the night sky, allowing the spacecraft to absorb and observe and catalog thousands of exoplanets for future studies oh, by the James fantastic. Webb Space Telescope, the um, Hubble Space Telescope, and large ground-based observatories. There's a wonderful uh, project by Jer Thorpe, which is a data visualization of a lot of the Kepler data. Um, we have five minutes. I can go track that down really quickly. Um, Jer Thorpe. Kepler. Internal sequences have started. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sequences are starting. Uh, at one point I had right, like. We are about four minutes and 45 seconds away from liftoff. So let's check in on the rocket one more so time before stepping in in the terminal count. Fuel is fully loaded on both stages and liquid So anyway, I, I, it's too exciting now. I can't, I can't look at this anymore. It is also now I was going to. itself with helium gas. We use that gas in order to. I have a code example, an old processing code example. Rocket while on the ground and in flight. And very soon what you're going to see is those cradle arms that are holding the rocket. They're going to open up and the transporter erector is going to lean back slightly. It's going to retract. You also might see some venting coming from the side of TV, from the TE. That's totally normal. It's just liquid oxygen that's boiling off, heating up, and being released from the tanks. At T minus one minute, the rocket's internal flight computers are going to take over, which you're here on the countdown net as Falcon 9 is in startup. I think startup. Merits, uh, The range is currently looking good for an on-time launch today. The payload I'm going is to launch with the on rocket. internal power and is go. And weather is go. We are looking awesome for a 6.51 p.m. T0. Now, our <laughs> launch window today is only 30 seconds long, but that's pretty much an instantaneous window. If for some reason we can't get off today, we'll come back again tomorrow at 7.09 p.m. Eastern Time to get All right, here I am go. inside so the SpaceX that, rocket. The last three and a half minutes of terminal count. Astronic is at retract angle, 88.3 degrees. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Come on, SpaceX, let's launch. I'm ready. Whoops. I just I messed up. Verification. Stage of unlocks look complete. Rocket, come on! Stage two, dump in hold secure. <laughs> By the way, I highly suggest you just go and watch the actual SpaceX live stream. You won't have me here. Oh, is it the mic? Stage two. Oh, no, have looks so complete. All right, we, I want to listen to what they're saying. Falcon 9 is on internal power. Falcon, uh, Falcon 9 on internal power. Vehicles in south line. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Close out, close out. AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS ready for launch. Falcon 9's in startup. Ground gas close as it's complete. Ground gas. St 
Engage Close out to complete. Present for flight. Present for flight. LD, go for launch. Go for launch. LD. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 15. 10. 10. 9. 8. 8 7. 7 6, 6. 5. 5. 4. 4. 3. 3. 2. 2. 2 1. 1. As you just saw, Falcon 9 has successfully cleared the pad and is now on its ascent with the test spacecraft in its bearing. <laughs> now coming up in about 15 minutes, you're going to hear the call out that Falcon 9 will have hit max Q. That stands for maximum aerodynamic pressure. That is the point at which the rocket is seeing its highest stresses on its ascent. Vehicle has passed maximum aerodynamic pressure. You can tell by the cheers and what you heard on that call out. We have gotten through Max Q. Coming up next, you're going to hear uh, the call for MVAC chilling. MVAC engine chill has begun. And that was it. That is where we chill in that Merlin vacuum engine down to operating temperature. Now, coming up here shortly, you're going to hear three big events happening in rapid succession. The first is MECO, that stands for Main Engine Cutoff. That is where all nine of the first stage engines are going to shut down. That's in preparation for the next step, which is stage step or stage separation. There's where stage one will separate from stage two. Stage one will make its way back down to the drone ship. Stage two will continue on with tests to its orbit. And then you're going to hear second engine start. That is the ignition of the second stage engine. Let's check it out here. Hello. I'm here reporting live from inside the rocket. <laughs> I forgot to get out before it went flipped off. Oof. It's pretty, pretty warm in here, actually. Be good. Oof. Stage one is on the split. I'm <laughs> right, and as you just saw, we had a successful stage separation and a successful Ooh. ignition of that second stage engine. Now the fairing should be deploying at any moment. There we go. And you can see that tiny but strong test spacecraft inside of that or on top of stage two. Now stage one is making its way back down to Earth. What we're going to see coming up pretty shortly is a boost back burn. Grid fins deployed. Grid fins have deployed. Both stages following nominal trajectories. Calling off trajectory, yes. How long does this thing go on for? Because I gotta go. <laughs> right now, stage <sighs> two is gonna continue to burn. All right, I think maybe I'm gonna go. <laughs> I think I did seconds. enough shtick well, here. One makes its way back down um, to Earth. I hope you're enjoying now, the SpaceX live stream. coming up for stage one. Um, the, the next one's going to be the entry burn. That's uh. where we're going to reignite three of the stage one engines. 
and that burn is intended to slow down stage one's descent as it makes its way through that thick upper atmosphere. This is, how do I rotate in? I feel like rotating would be good. There's got to be like a rotation. We're seeing in, that at six minutes um, and 29 seconds or so, so in about two preview, minutes. Preview, transform, rotate. Well, there's this. But how do I just like, I can resize. Is there a place I can grab onto to rotate? Oh. Silly Apple taskbar. No, this is live. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, I gotta go. We're hearing that stage two's burn is still performing nominally. All right, everybody, at least wait for the booster to land. This was fun. This will be recorded. I can always come back and do this again. Hey, stage two is going to continue to burn Actually, for about another three minutes. What this minutes really should be And one minute until we see that reentry burn. This. Now, after that reentry burn, uh, stage one is going to continue on making its way down to the drone ship. And coming up thereafter will be the landing burn. That'll be the third of the three burns. And at that point, we're going to reignite that center engine, E9. And that'll bring All us right. down. It's actually at 7 o'clock. I have to go. All right. Time. Thank you, everybody. Remember how I said this? Go and watch the real SpaceX. Uh, go and watch the actual SpaceX uh, live stream. I'm going to go. And um, uh, <laughs> um, I will see you hopefully um, another live stream next week for sure. A week from this Friday. I won't be here this Friday. I'll definitely be here a week from this Friday. And there might be uh, at least a, a live stream in between then or a video that, uh, that I'll, I'll be doing between then. Okay? Um, uh, so let me get going here. I'm going to hit stop and goodbye. I will see you next time on the coding train. Thank you for tuning in and participating in this insanity. <laughs>